Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tony. I've been warned uh, by Julie to limit my little speech to nine minutes, nine and a half. Uh, I want to take this time to first thank all of you and through you all who demonstrated against the barbaric war uh, on Gaza um, late December and through January. I think as never before in the history of this country, uh, hundreds of thousands of people have demonstrated on behalf of the Palestinian people who in the minds of many in the West are a bunch of uh, uh, terrorists um, and in the words of the late Begin, semi-human beings. He did not realize that we are not only equal human beings, some of us, some of us, as a result of the way they have tolerated the oppression of those who've been oppressed only yesterday have become superhuman beings in, in, the, in the way they have uh, uh, resisted uh, with their bodies uh, because they had no other means to resist uh, the Israeli occupation, um, uh, the discrimination, the uh, separation wall, the 900 uh, uh, checkpoints in the West Bank, the siege on Gaza, the starvation of, of the little ones and the like. So thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm thankful to Tony for covering most of this uh, episode in the, in, in the history of uh, mankind. And I want to add that uh, many people continue to find a reason to accuse others for what has been going on in the so-called Holy Land or around the so-called Holy Land. And to make it easy for people present here, someone said that all this conflict, all this war is attributed to a misunderstanding on behalf of Almighty God. And someone asked, how come Almighty God, and I hope you bear with me, my sisters and brothers, uh, I'm not blasphemous, but this is, one way of trying to uh, explain what has been happening. Uh, how come Almighty God misunderstands? And you refer to Moses. And we all know that uh, our dear Moses could not speak well. He stammered and his brother Aaron used to speak on behalf uh, of Moses. And when uh, God came to Moses after 40 years roaming in that desert, um, God came to Moses and said, Moses, I want to make you a favor. And Moses said, what, 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 what other favor? Give me a, a, a piece of land to settle in. And God said, you don't need to speak. You don't need to stammer. I'll open your eyes. The whole world is before you. Pick up that piece of land. It's yours. And God opened the eyes of Moses, and Moses could not wait. And start saying, I'd like to have the land of ka 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 And God said, yes, I know, Moses, you want the land of Canaan. He didn't realize that Moses was asking for Canada. <laughs> ever since, ever since, ever since we've been going through this uh, story of pain, but I hope that it will be also a story of hope. The shooting may have stopped in, in Gaza or on Gaza, but the war is still on. The war will will cease if the causes that made for war are no more. We all know that peace is not the absence of war. We all know that peace is not the cessation of hostilities. Peace is that relationship from which all the causes that made for war are, are no more. Israel must, must be made, perhaps for its own sake, if not for the sake of the Jewish faith, for the sake of the Jewish people worldwide, Israel must be made to comply with United Nations resolutions. It came in accordance with United Nations resolutions. It must be made to comply with United Nations resolutions, whereby the Palestinians, irrespective of all what happened to us from 47, not 48, from the partition plan on the 29th of November, 1947, up till now, irrespective of what may happen tomorrow and the day after, the different attempts, ethnic cleansing, we told them we'll have to prepare five million 
six million plastic bags. No one will leave now. Where will we leave? We've seen what happened to the refugees in the neighboring countries, what happened to the Palestinians worldwide. I mean, we have no other home but that uh, land, which, which we also believe has been given to Abraham, and Abraham is the father of the faithful. Where in the Bible is Abraham spoken of as a Jew? No way. He was spoken of as Hebraic, yes. The Hebrews, Avrim, those who crossed the river, we also crossed the river. So in as much as it belongs to them, it certainly <coughs> belongs to us. So the way forward is to make Israel come to terms with the reality that the Palestinians are there to stay for always and that we have been predestined to live side to side with them as Jews. And we did live as Christians, Muslims and Jews for generations, for hundreds of years. Only when the others, the others are well known to you. Those who are now in Iraq and then Afghanistan, only when the others, when people speak of the separation wall, the first separation wall was built by the Partition Commission, the United Nations Commission that partitioned Palestine. That was the first separation wall when they divided the, the people of the same land, namely the Jewish people from uh, the, the Palestinians in, in that part of the world. I am of the opinion that for Israel to comply with the United Nations resolutions, for Palestinians to have their right to determine their present and their future, for Palestinians to enjoy an independent, viable Palestinian state on Palestinian soil, not in Jordan as the Israel, I think the way will be open, uh, wide open for uh, peace, for healing, and for reconciliation. I'm of the opinion that um, the two-state solution continue to be a viable one, a valid one. Um, many people doubt that it will work. But I strongly believe that if Israel were to withdraw to the 4th of June 1967, and those who may continue to live in the West Bank from the Jewish settlers, Ezer Weizmann, the late Ezer Weizmann told George Kerry, when George Kerry was the Archbishop, in my presence, that 83% of all those settlers would leave, so 17% may remain there, they will have to ask for Palestinian citizenship if they are to stay there. But I'm also uh, aware of the possibility of either a confederated or a federated two, state, uh, uh, two states in, in the Middle East. Uh, in, in one of the books written by uh, Schreiber, uh, after meeting with Shimon Peres, the present, president of the state of Israel, The Choice and the Chosen is the title of that book, Peres speaks of the possibility of Palestine becoming like Taiwan and Israel like Japan. Now, if he believes that we Palestinians can become like the people of Taiwan or like Taiwan and, the, and Israel becoming like, like, like Japan, certainly we keep reminding him that there are 1.3 million Palestinians inside Israel. We make up 20% of, of that population and we continue to struggle for equality and we will look to the day when, when the Israelis will, will believe that their peace is to be found in the peace of the Palestinians and that their security is to be found also in the peace and the security of the Palestinians. Never, never give up when, when you believe that we can stop the war, not only in the Middle East, but anywhere in the world. Keep demonstrating. Don't underestimate how much each and every one of you can do. I keep reminding myself and others of the early believers in Christianity. And I keep telling the church worldwide that their number was so few, with no means whatsoever. The same is true when we uh, examine the early beginnings of Islam. There were so few and no means whatsoever. But in both cases, they managed to change the course of human history. We are able, irrespective of our numbers, we are able to change the course of human history if we believe we can do it. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah.